Hey guys, it's Nicole with the QA Compliance team for another edition of the Right Way Wednesday. I am recording an impromptu video today because I have been working on some appeals for a UPIC audit. Um, there were, I think, 22, I might be wrong about that, there might have been a couple more, give or take one or two, that um, were sent in for a review at ADR for this UPIC audit. And most of those came back at least partially denied, if not fully denied. A couple of the common themes that we've seen with these denial reasons as we are going through the appeal process um, are things like not documenting the treatment um, as distinct and separate on the first day when the evaluation occurred. So the clinicians were documenting something like in the treatment notes. So they were documenting the eval minutes presenting me full eval as that documentation. And then under the treatment, they were billing anywhere between 30 and 80 minutes of treatment on that first day. And in that first treatment note, only documenting that the eval was completed, please see electronic medical records. Well, you can't do that. You really have to document um, on every CPT code you're billing. You have to be able to support it on a daily basis. and documenting that the eval completed under your treatment note doesn't support that those treatments that you are billing for were distinct and separate. So that was one common theme that we've seen a lot. And I wanted to bring up another common theme was that services were repetitive in nature. And so what these reviewers are doing are actually picking out pieces of our treatment time that they consider, say, therapeutic exercises. Um, one thing that they're really kind of picking on us for is the excessive use of the, something like the ergometer or a stepper or something like that, using it over and over and over again and billing it as therapeutic exercise throughout the entire plan of care. So they've called us out on it. They've said our documentation doesn't support that that was um, skilled anymore after the first couple of treatments, that that could have been transitioned over as a part of um, a functional maintenance program of some sort as an adjunct to our skilled treatment. And they've pulled basically those minutes out, thus rugging down um, the rug level from say an ultra high to a high or an ultra high to a very high. Um, so that's pretty significant if you think about that and extrapolate that over an entire month. So think about that as you're looking at your daily notes. The other common theme, however, that really has stuck out at me and I wanted to kind of jump on and talk to you about the one that prompted uh, me to actually record this video is the lack of documentation surrounding significant events that occur after the evaluation. So something happens, say pain has all of a sudden um, been reported and it wasn't reported at evaluation, or um, a family member reports uh, an x-ray that was completed off campus, uh, but we don't actually have the report and we need to follow up on it and lack of documentation surrounding those events. And I wanted to read to you one specific one that really, again, just sort of today jumped out at me. And it's kind of a long one. And this is only a portion of what the reviewers said. These reviewers are reading our documentation and they are giving us very specific feedback about our documentation. And it's really important if you're a rehab director to read these denial reasons when you get them to help you understand not only why the claim was denied, but what you could do differently the next time and what your clinicians can do differently the next time. And then take the, that information, those denial reasons, and talk about it with your teams and really discuss, okay, what were we missing? What could we have done better? So I wanna read this denial reason or a part of this denial reason to you. And I wanna talk about what I think these clinicians could have done better um, and what they were really missing. So in this case, the OT daily treatment note indicated that the patient reported that he had had trouble swallowing and speech therapy was brought into the room to assess swallowing and choking risk. It had been requested by the physician according to the OT note. The beneficiary did exhibit some coughing, okay, following thin liquids. The OT documented that they called the SLPN, this is all great, called the SLPN. Um, the SLP then gave the patient thickened liquids um, for swallowing trials and a modified barium swallow study was, was recommended at this time. A review of the, of the speech therapy documentation, however, did not indicate that a bedside swallowing eval was performed. So the speech therapist came in, 
trialed um, a mechanically altered liquid, but didn't document that in the daily notes and didn't bill for an evaluation, didn't document that they actually evaluated the swallow at this time. A review of it, um, let, me, oh, let me skip forward. Um, the progress report, the speech therapy progress report did not indicate that any goals for swallowing were added to the plan of care. And the patient caregiver training section indicated that the beneficiary was just generally educated on compensatory swallow strategies and required additional information, but a review of the treatment notes and service logs did not indicate that any treatment minutes were recorded for dysphagia treatment, okay? That's pretty significant. We've documented that we did compensatory strategy training with the, um, with the patient, but we didn't actually bill for dysphagia treatment, okay? The speech therapy note, um, on the date the issue was identified by OT, stated that the beneficiary was given crossword puzzles to complete, and that was it. So um, even that, when we're talking about supporting that speech therapy treatment, that's kind of a stretch if we're just documenting that the patient did crossword puzzles, all right? There were no daily treatment notes for the remainder of the admission. That included swallowing treatment. And there was a note that the beneficiary had an MBS on, um, on a date, on a specific date to rule out aspiration, but the note stated that the results were pending and no swallowing therapy again was documented. And then the treatment just went on um, per usual for the speech and, speech and language issues. So what's significant about this is I am more than sure that this speech therapist followed up on that modified barium swallow study and we can assume potentially that nothing came of that and they were able to rule out aspiration and thus no dysphagia treatment was necessary. It could have been an isolated incident. Um, there may have been multiple reasons why that patient um, was exhibiting um, the signs that they were exhibiting on that particular day uh, a couple of weeks prior. So, however, we didn't document any of that. We didn't document the follow-up. We didn't document um, the fact that we performed an assessment. And we could probably argue that the speech therapist determined that that part of that day was maybe a screen, but we can't, from the documentation, really support that what we billed for on that day as our speech and language treatment didn't include that, that screen of sorts that we did when we looked at swallowing and the need for thickened liquids or the potential need for thickened liquids and then recommending that modified barium swallow study. So there are just a lot of gaps. And remember, we talk a lot about painting a picture, right? Painting a picture of the clinical um, complexity and functional decline of our residents and how important that is to connect all of those dots. Because we can make a lot of assumptions. I can look at this documentation and make a lot of assumptions based on what I know uh, likely happened. The problem is we can't support any of those assumptions because they weren't written down. And so I thought that was a great way to sort of highlight the importance of not just documenting on your goals, but documenting on everything that's happening with that resident, every intervention we provide, providing a rationale for it, and then making sure that that we create that picture, that we create that clear picture of what the resident, what is going on with the resident. So hopefully that helped. Um, think about any scenarios that you might have had recently where maybe you didn't document everything you needed to document um, and moving forward, looking at how you can better paint the clinical picture of your patient and avoid um, a, a denial such as this. So hopefully um, this helped. If you have any questions, please ask us in the chat box below. We'd be happy to answer them or reach out to us um, to the QAC team directly via email. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day. Happy documenting.